Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus. Mary Shelley was born in 1797. She lived in a revolutionary period. The French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution, and a literary revolution. Her father was William Godwin, a philosopher and political activist. Her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, an early feminist writer. She died when Mary was born. She mixed with philosophers and writers when she was a child, and Coleridge read to her the ancient mariner. The ice was here, the ice was there, the ice was all around. It cracked and groaned. She was terrified. She read widely and loved Milton. When she was 16 years old, she eloped to Switzerland with the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley. And when his wife died, she married him. As a child, I scribbled, and my favorite recreation was to write stories. Even dearer to me was the pleasure of the formation of castles in the air, waking dreams. In the summer of 1816, my husband and I went to Switzerland and became the neighbors of Lord Byron. The season was cold and rainy, and in the evenings we crowded around a blazing wood fire and occasionally amused ourselves with some German stories of ghosts. Two other friends and myself agreed to write a story based on some supernatural occurrence. I busied myself to think of a story, a story who could rival those we had been reading but could think of nothing. Have you thought of a story? I was asked each morning. My companions talked of the experiments of Dr. Darwin, the grandfather of the man who wrote The Origin of the Species, who, it was said, preserved a piece of vermicelli in a glass case until, by some extraordinary means, it began to move. Perhaps, a corpse would be reanimated. Galvanism had given a token of such things. Night came, but when I placed my head upon my pillow, I did not sleep. My imagination possessed and guided me. I saw a pale student kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw the hideous phantasm of a man stretched out and then, on the working of some powerful engine, shows signs of life. I once dreamt that the thoughts labouring this brain might shape themselves to such words as might weave a chain to bind the thoughts of my fellow creatures to me, in love and sympathy.